The image of the beginning of the congregation is when all 215 members arrived in Rome. We began by an opening Mass. Mass was held at the Jesu, our mother church, near the tomb of St. Ignatius Loyola. And it's customary that the Jesuits don't celebrate that Mass themselves. But they invite someone. And it was fitting in this 800 years of St. Dominic, given the history and the relationship between the Dominicans and the Jesuits, for the Master General of the Dominicans, Father Bruno Cadore, to celebrate the Mass and to preach to the Jesuits. Father Cadore had a very moving homily and he called us to an audacity, an audacity of faith. He really wanted us to think beyond the limits of what we knew and to see how God was speaking to us. And the next morning, we gather in this beautifully redesigned aula to begin the first plenary session of the general congregation. And as always, we begin with a prayer, but it's a particular prayer. We call upon the Holy Spirit because we believe the Holy Spirit guides, particularly the election of the Superior General, and the Holy Spirit guides all the phases of the congregation. So we sang, Come Holy Spirit, the old Latin chant, Veni Creatori Spiritus, and we chanted that together, and then we, in a sense, convoked the congregation by determining that everyone who was elected was there, present, and ready to begin. One of the first orders of business was to accept the resignation of Father Adolfo Nicolas. It's important to remember that only a congregation can elect a superior general, and only a congregation can accept the resignation of a superior general. After the ballot was counted, and then the votes were called out aloud, it was clear that the congregation had accepted the resignation of Adolfo Nicolas. Obviously, after the resignation of a general, one thinks that logically the next step is the election of a new superior general. But there's an interim step, and that is looking at the state of the Society of Jesus today. They use the Latin De Statu. And the De Statu is a report by a commission that has met before the congregation, and they look at the Society of Jesus. They look at it throughout the world, where it's strong, where it's weak. Because many of the members of the congregation don't know each other, recognize there are 215 people coming from 60 countries, more than half of them are meeting each other for the first time. We don't simply discuss the De Statu in the large meeting room. Rather, we break off into groups, different language groups. There were groups in French and Spanish and English and Italian. I think there was even a German group. And we discuss the state of the society and get to know each other. And Monday we began a very unique process for the election of a new leader. Basically, the members, the electors, are instructed to spend four days in a period called murmuraciones. And the murmuraciones is where members sit in groups of two, one on one, and they each ask one another, how would this man be for general? Is there anyone you think I should be considering for general? And those one-on-one -on -one conversations, some, some members had 15, 20, 25 of those conversations in a day. So you think of those, those really uh, hundreds of conversations over 215 members over the course of four days, the members have a sense of who might be their next general. Now at no point at the end of the process is there any canvassing or groups coming together saying, I think this is the direction we're going. No. It's only the one-on-one -on -one conversations. And then there's the day of election. And the day of election begins with a Mass. We had a, a Mass at the Santo Spiritu Church because it's right next to the Curia where we would be voting. A very early morning Mass. Everyone was vested in there early because they were really praying to the Spirit, praying to God for guidance. There's a homily given, a homily was shared, a very moving uh, memory again of our history, our tradition, and what was at stake. Members then went into the aula in silence. There was an exhortation given on, on the nature of what we were doing, grounding it again in our history and the context in which we were voting. And then there was 40 minutes of silence. 
members just sat there in silence, praying that the spirit whom we had called upon at Mass and in the singing of the Veni Creator Spiritus would illumine us as we casted our ballots. After the silence is done, the secretary says, we will now begin the first ballot. And the balloting goes until we find a candidate who has the majority of the votes. I can tell you, sitting in the aula, first time, this is the first time for me electing a superior general. There were 212 electors, so the magic number was someone had to have more than 107 votes. And when you see a name, in this case, it was Father Arturo Sosa, surpass that number. First there's a sigh, and then you see here this mounting applause, and, and then there's tears because we have a new leader. We have a superior general. And it came really through prayer, through, through conversation, and through, we believe, the work of the Holy Spirit. We saw the general, his first move was to go to the other side of the aula and to greet Father Adolfo Nicolás, where they embraced, in a sense, a continuation of leadership in the Society of Jesus. All of the members greeted him, many bringing some of their own cultural ways of greeting the superior general. We prayed together in the Borgia Chapel in the Curia and then celebrated a very festive pranzo. The next morning we went to the Church of the Jesu again, right beside the bones of our founder, Saint Ignatius Loyola. The Jesu Church has uh, the tomb of St. Ignatius, but it's also adjacent to what we call the Camarete, the rooms of St. Ignatius. So St. Ignatius himself, as superior general, lived in that neighborhood, and his rooms, the room where he died, is restored. Actually, the room where he died is a chapel. And so Father Sosa went to the Camarete with one of the youngest members of the congregation, one of the oldest members of the congregation. And there he received a copy of the spiritual exercises from the archives, an original copy, a copy of the Constitutions. And there with some of these, these relics of the Society of Jesus, which underscore our institute, tracing back to our founder, he prayed for the grace there where our founder had died, the grace to receive that wisdom, that inspiration, and that grace to go to the Jesu to preach and lead us and begin his fruitful ministry as Superior General and celebrated the first Mass with the new General. Father General preached as is customary. He preached in Italian because this Mass was not only for the Jesuits but uh, TV 2000 in Italy carried it live so that all the people of Italy could hear the first message of the new Superior General. In his message to the delegates, Father Sosa called to mind the great tradition of the society. Collaboration was one of them. Uh, our, our mission to the world, to the frontiers, to the peripheries. The audacity of faith, which Father Bruno Cadore had spoken about in the opening Mass. So he continues to, to, to speak of, of, of these themes, but now as a superior general, as someone who's almost taking his first steps as our voice and as our leader into this new time. At the end of the Mass, he went to the tomb of St. Ignatius. And there, a litany of prayers was said and sung by all in the Jesu. This congregation gathered, yes, to elect Father Sosa, but also to respond to the business needs of the Jesuit order at this time. We call this in Latin the ad negotia period, and it's again to address the business, toward the business end of the society. When the ad negotium phase begins, there's in the formula a process, but there's an interesting tension 
that exists in the Ad Negotia phase. Imagine 215 Jesuits, many of whom are provincials, are leaders of institutions, are used to, in a sense, running things. Imagine them sitting in this large aula, trying to determine together where the order is going to go. One of the big tensions is between whether we're a parliamentary body or a discerning apostolic body. And the answer really is both. So your discerning body, you pray about everything you bring before, before one another, but then you have to have a mechanism, a, a process, a way of bringing all these suggestions, decisions, amendments to conclusion, to decrees. And so there's a certain, <laughs> almost a, a legislative body. And so that's one of the tensions that exists in this ad negotia phase. And it's marvelous to see how we both know when to stop and pray how to sometimes be patient and listen to some of the passion, the energy, even some of the criticism that exists in the Aula, recognizing that the Spirit doesn't just speak through laughter and accomplishment, but sometimes the Spirit speaks when we're not in agreement or we're at odds with each other. And then to see how together we can come to consensus and vote and put on paper decrees which give direction, in a sense, apostolic priorities and hope to the Society of Jesus and those with whom we minister and to those whom we serve. Every session, every morning in the Aula began with morning prayer. And it was, it was, it was a very similar ritual. It was in the languages uh, of English and Spanish and French, but it also utilized the many languages of the Society that were in the Aula. So it was quite common for, for the leaders of prayer, perhaps to have us pray together the psalms and the prayers in one of the three languages of the congregation, but to offer a blessing or an intercession in a language that was unique to a part of the world that perhaps none of us had ever heard. And then every day ended in Mass. And there were, <laughs> there were four Masses one could attend in English, in Spanish, in Italian, and in French. We were praying together in many languages around the altar of the Lord with our brothers from around the world. It's, it's very customary for the members of the congregation to meet with the Pope. Pope Francis was invited and came on October 24th. Pope Francis joined the Jesuits of the 36th General Congregation for a morning of prayer and conversation. He was greeted by the new Jesuit leader, Father General Arturo Sosa, and the superior of the Jesuit Curia, Father Joaquin Barrero. He made his way upstairs to the aula, the large hall where the Jesuits had been working all these weeks, and was greeted with thunderous applause and cheerful admiration. Once the room was settled and the Jesuits took their place, the musicians played instrumental music to set the tone for the special morning prayer service. Hymns were sung, and intentions in various languages were voiced for Pope Francis and the Church. At the conclusion of their morning praise, all the men recited the Our Father and sang together Ad Maiorum De Gloria. A warm welcome was invoked by Father General Sosa and the much beloved pontiff, speaking in Spanish, gave his address to the faithful Jesuits. At the conclusion of his speech, the Holy Father joined Father General and the Jesuit delegates for a large group photo, a photo that will historically capture this special day when the first Jesuit Pope comes to a Jesuit general congregation. Pope Francis knows the society, he knows our institute, and see, he wrote a very, very moving talk, grounded in the formula of the institute, 
the letters of St. Ignatius Loyola, the letters of past popes to congregations, as well as the decrees of past congregations. He grounded it in our institute, but he also spoke, in a sense, as a Jesuit and as the Supreme Pontiff, the Holy Father, telling us how that institute could bring hope and life to the world. It's not common that a pope comes and meets with a group of Jesuits. It's also a very spiritual, very humble moment where together the Jesuits and the Holy Father sat before God to receive his guidance and his mercy. Father General, is, um, it's important to note something about the Superior General. Sometimes you see people salute. <laughs> because they hear the word general and they think of a military man, uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. We don't call him general because he gives us orders as a commander in chief would. We call him general because it comes from the Latin generalis, meaning overall. He has the care and the responsibility for the whole society and so that's why he is our general superior. But he cannot do it all alone. With over 16,000 Jesuits in the world and over 90 provinces and regions, he needs help. And so he forms a council. Nine members of the council are his regional assistants, and they represent various parts of the world. There's another election that happens at the congregation, and that is the election of the councillors ad providentiam and his admonitor. Because the general is elected by the congregation, the congregation also has an obligation to provide him with four special councillors and an admonitor and these four and the admonitor have that privileged role of giving the general the particular care, advice, and direction he may need. Just as we began with a Mass, we conclude with a Mass of Thanksgiving. We all gather once again with our new Superior General, this time at the Church of San Ignacio. <laughs> so we were near, near the relics of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, St. John Berkman's, St. Robert Bellarmine. And they are surrounded by those saints in a church that has the beautiful symbol above the altar. I will be propitious to you in Rome from the vision of Lestorta. We hear that final homily of the Superior General in a sense encapsulating what all the members of the congregation had done in Rome those weeks and then missioning everyone back to the world, to their provinces, to their communities, to their members and collaborators who will bring the decrees and the fruit of GC 36 to life. Innalziamo ora il nostro vino di ringraziamento 